Ambassador, last week in the German Parliament, the Bundestag, uh, Chancellor Scholz uh, criticized the president of the Palestinian Authority, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, for not having reacted to what was taking place in Gaza and in Israel at the time, uh, saying that he f thought it was a shameful way of reacting or not reacting. Why did it take so long, do you think, for a reaction to come from President Abbas? Well, first, thank you very much for having me. And I think that uh, no one took any time to express uh, our position vis-a-vis -vis the events that have been unfolding uh, the last uh, nine days or the events that have been unfolding uh, the last 75 years. Let me be very clear. We've been uh, condemning violence for 75 years. We've been condemning uh, terrorism for 75 years. We've been calling on the international community to intervene, to implement international law, to uphold the human rights for 75 years. We've signed a historic peace agreement, a peace agreement that was signed by His Excellency President Abbas himself, uh, that promised a better future for all the children and peoples of the region. We remained committed to that agreement. We remained committed to the agreements that ensued. We remained committed to international law and to humanitarian law and to human rights. And we remain committed to these agreements as we speak, despite the fact that every single agreement, every single provision in those agreements were violated by Israel. Had those agreements been honored, had those agreements been respected, had the international community intervened to bring Israel to commit to those agreements, we would have been in a different place today. So I, 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 I would respectfully disagree uh, with the assumption that we took our time to express our opinion. I think that uh, you took your time in hearing us out. So you are saying, uh, you said you condemn terrorism. Uh, does that include these attacks of Hamas? Do you condemn them as terrorism on Israel? I've told you where we stand. We condemn civili the killings of civilians everywhere. We reject the killings and targeting of civilians everywhere, irrespective of nationality, race or religion. We call for the immediate release of hostages, uh, prisoners, detainees on both sides. We wish to see an immediate end to the ongoing aggression that has so far claimed the lives of thousands of innocent people. We wish to see the current trajectory, the persistence of which only portends the death and murder of thousands more. We wish to see an end to the current trajectory, and that trajectory is not going to end without a meaningful, serious intervention by the international community. What kind of intervention are you talking about? To bring Israel to end the aggression. What is happening today in Gaza, as you see, is an unbridled, aggression that is targeting the most innocent, the people that had no hand or decision in the conflict that has started not nine days ago, but has been ongoing for 75 years, that have been paying the price for this inhumane conflict, the continuation of which is untenable, does not make sense, is in breach of every international law, of every humanitarian principle, of every morality, every, fa every principle of decency. Uh, the, uh, Israel and also Germany, the United States have said this aggression has been started by that attack of Hamas on Israel. Otherwise, there wouldn't be this conflict going on at the moment. I think, I think the conflict has been ongoing for 75 years. I think the occupation, the illegal occupation of Palestine has been ongoing for many decades. I think that the peace agreements that we signed promised an end to the conflict 24 years ago. They have been breached. This conflict, it's important. As ugly as the events that we're all witnessing are, it is important not to lose sight of the fact that this conflict did not start eight or nine days ago. This conflict has been ongoing for decades. We've seen, we've seen in the last 10 years alone, at least four 
uh, assaults on the Gaza Strip, military assaults that have claimed the lives of thousands of innocent people. Let's not forget the ongoing, the unhinged, the unabated assaults that have been taking place against the innocent civilians in the West Bank have been ongoing for years, have been ongoing for years. Had the international community rallied its support behind a peace process that would end and that would bring an end to this conflict on the basis of international law, on the basis of the signed agreements, on the basis of the United Nations Security Council resolutions, we would have been in a different place now. What role can the Palestinian Authority play in this process now? What help can you offer the people of Gaza? Do you have any influence on Hamas at all? Our number one priority right now is to bring an end to the ongoing aggression. That's our top priority. Our top priority is to protect the innocent civilians that are, by, that are being targeted by this ongoing aggression. End the aggression. End the war. Save lives. That's our, that's our priority. But what can you do to, do, to, to achieve that? Once again, we have made our position abundantly clear. We reject the killing of innocent civilians. We renew the call for ending the targeting of uh, uh, civilians everywhere. We call for an immediate release for all hostages, detainees, prisoners on both sides. And we are exerting every possible effort with the international community for a meaningful intervention that would bring an end to this aggression. Okay, so you are influencing the international community in turn to influence Israel to stop the aggression. Is that your position? At this point, blood is being spilled on the, on, on, on the streets. Uh, neighborhoods are being uh, destroyed one neighborhood at a time. Over one million Palestinians are being forcibly uh, uh, expelled from their homes. Uh, the continuation of the current aggression would lead probably to the expulsion of the Palestinians, as was made clear by, uh, by, 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 by the official Israeli spokespersons as one of the uh, objectives of the ongoing aggression is to expel uh, the Palestinian people living in Gaza from the Gaza Strip. We are witnessing a catastrophe. We are witnessing the continuation of the current trajectory portends another Nakba. Our number one priority now is to save lives, is to bring an end to the aggression, is to save the lives of the innocent people from all sides. Now, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz is in Israel, is visiting Israel today um, as a show of solidarity, also in terms of diplom diplomacy. Germany says that protecting Israel or the existence of Israel is part of its, um, it's called uh, Staatsraison, which as I say in German, so a fundamental principle of the German state. What role can Germany play in this whole situation? Well, I think this question ought to be asked to the German government to give an explanation as what the concept of Staatsraison uh, 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 actually means. But uh, I'm 100% confident that also Germany is sincere uh, when it comes to its commitment to international law, to international humanitarian law, and to human rights law. And uh, it's clear that the current events are in grave contradiction of international law, of international humanitarian law, hence the values that Germany champions and stands for. Now, uh, you've repeatedly criticized um, that here in Germany, demonstrations in favor of uh, Palestinians, uh, pro-Palestinian demonstrations have been uh, banned. Um, the police have said that uh, these will lead to incitement, to uh, hate crimes possibly. What can be done to, to kind of, how shall I say, to calm tempers? here in Germany amongst the Palestinian community? Well, first and foremost, let me uh, make myself very clear. We reject incitement. We reject all forms of hate speech. This applies Palestine and certainly applies here in Germany. And I think in order to address incitement, one needs to address the root causes of incitement. And let's not lose sight of the fact 
that the events on the ground are the most powerful source of incitement. The events on the ground are the ones that are fueling all the emotions amongst everyone. That being said, I urge everyone to respect the laws, to respect the values of the societies. And as much as I urge each and every citizen to do so, I urge the authorities in every capital, and particularly in the capitals of the free world, also to respect the laws and to respect the values that serve as a distinctive mark in these societies, such as the values of free speech and expression. I believe, I believe that these values or the wide space for free expression is being abridged, probably unintentionally, probably out of impulse. But this is where authorities should intervene, reassess. I assure you that the rallies and the events that are being, most of them, that are being restricted, wish to express rejection to war, rejection to violence, rejection to attempts to violate international law. They are calling for upholding human rights. I think it would be uh, inappropriate, unwise to restrict them. Now, what, a, what chance do you see for peace? What, what is your vision for Gaza? As you would imagine, I'm very sad. I'm very upset. I'm worried for the millions that are being made to pay the price of this conflict, the millions of innocent people. I, the heart breaks for the innocent civilians that have already been claimed during this conflict. At the same time, I'm equally sad for what is going to come unless this trajectory, this current war does not end now. That is why we are appealing to the international community. We are appealing to international organizations. We are appealing to world leaders to intervene, to bring an end to this aggression. They ought to remember that the ones who are paying the price for this aggression, for this conflict, are the most innocent. We're talking about 2,000 600, 700 Palestinians have already been killed. We're talking about over 800 children have already been killed, over half uh, of whom are under the age of 10. Eight million kilograms of explosives have already been dropped on Gaza, the total area of which is around one third the total area of Berlin meaning that four kilograms have already been dropped on Gaza for each citizen. We appeal to the international community to bring an end to this conflict. Justice is the way forward, not vengeance. Okay, we can say if there is an appeal to the international community, you can say that the West, the United States, Germany have influence on one party in this conflict, Israel, who has influence on Hamas, who can stop Hamas? I think Peace is the answer. Addressing the root causes of the conflict is the answer. I think we should not lose sight of that fact. I think that we should address the environment that leads to the violence which we reject. And I think peace is the answer. That is why I think that the international community should focus its efforts on, what's ne on what needs to be done to bring about a genuine solution to this conflict on the basis of international legitimacy. And I think that if the international community wishes to do so, it can do so. Ambassador, thank you very much for speaking to DW. Thank you for having me.